Uh, Secretary Countryman, last spring this committee held a hearing on the new U.S.-China Civil Nuclear Cooperation Agreement. During that hearing, we discussed very credible allegations about China's inability or, as I suggested, unwillingness to enforce its commitments to prevent bad actors like Carl Lee from selling ballistic missile technology to Iran, North Korea, and other countries of concern. As has been discussed here today, Iran has conducted two ballistic missile tests in the past few weeks in violation of UN Security Council Resolution 1929. Which countries do you believe are providing ballistic missile technologies to Iran, Mr. Secretary? My assessment is the same as it was this spring, that the primary source of advanced missile uh, advanced technology for Iran's ballistic missile program are companies in China. Uh, I believe the Chinese government has stepped up its efforts to enforce its own laws and UN sanctions. However, I cannot say that they have reached a satisfactory point of enforcement. Yeah. And so, again, that continues to be my very serious concern. It was my concern about the approval of the China Civil Nuclear Agreement without conditions attached to it. Now, I did not have the support on this committee or in the Senate to attach those conditions, but those conditions would have imposed upon China a requirement to put in place the safeguards against Carl Lee and others transferring ballistic missiles into Iran and into North Korea and to other countries. I mean, we essentially have the equivalent of uh, the nuclear materials, which I think are now under very close safeguards, being the bullets, but the missiles are the guns. And we're in a gun control dis discussion here today, ballistic missiles. They can deliver those nuclear bullets to uh, other uh, countries in the world. And China is the um, gun manufacturer. and. Uh, and so from my perspective, we missed a great opportunity here uh, to condition that agreement. I think we should have, um, because this whole discussion on ballistic missiles now goes back to that China agreement, since they are, from the administration's perspective, the most likely source of the ballistic missile technology. Uh, and we had a lot of leverage at that point. I argued that we should condition it at that time. But uh, again, I think it was a great historic missed opportunity um, to draw a line on nuclear proliferation issues uh, to create the linkages uh, so that we could have in one year put tough safeguards on the bullet program, the nuclear uh, materials program, and on the gun program, the ballistic missile delivery. That was China, though, not Iran. Uh, they'll receive whatever can come through clandestinely. And as long as Kyle Lee and people like that are able to move around China with impunity, uh, I think we're going to continue to have a very serious problem. Uh, and we might as well just have the hearing on that subject, you know, uh, because that's the ballistic missile discussion in Iran. Uh, and it's going to be other countries like China who believe that notwithstanding their public support for gun control, uh, that they find their own way around a relatively poorly enforced restriction uh, because we don't step up and use our leverage when the historic opportunity arrives. And that was the China uh, civilian nuclear agreement. If anything was directly related to Iran and its nuclear program, it was what China was looking for at that point, to have that discussion. Didn't happen. So, um, so uh, going forward, having lost that opportunity, what else do we have as a tool uh, to uh, let China know how serious we are about this and how we don't intend on countenancing a circumvention of an international agreement that the entire world at least ostensibly says that they believe uh, is very important to long-term global stability. Well, briefly, I will be in Beijing again uh, next month. I don't wish to have whatever I say there dismissed as finger-wagging, uh, because I think it'll be a pretty strong message. But uh, I also... Uh, can't predict and can't forecast at this moment what additional actions we will take against uh, Chinese entities that are complicit in providing ballistic missile technology. I'll only say 
as we said earlier, that under active consideration right now are additional effective measures in response to the October 10th test. Well, I appreciate that. I think it's inadequate. I don't think it's, you know, going to actually have the kind of weight uh, force uh, behind it that uh, rejection of or conditioning of the China civilian nuclear agreement would have. But again, it just continues to raise the whole question of China, of, of uh, nuclear 123 agreements, uh, the very high hypocrisy coefficient that it then sends out uh, as a message to the rest of the world. And, and I would hope that, Mr. Chairman, next year that we uh, take up once again, you know, the 123 agreement of climate that we've created around the world where we are suppliers ourselves uh, and unfortunately turn a blind eye too often to uh, other gun suppliers uh, who are out there uh, who do not believe that there is going to be a sufficiently uh, uh, well-enforced um, international response when it's clear that there are violations which are taking place and I don't think there's any question that Carl Lee is the gun dealer, the ballistic missile dealer, one of them anyway, but at the top of the list and that there still is not sufficient um, Chinese response to it. And I don't think there's sufficient response from our own country's perspective on it. Uh, I just think we have to take a harder line on it. Uh, and there's really no point uh, in trying to convince people that Iran is sincere uh, if they're engaging in an ongoing clandestine ballistic missile um, a program with supplies coming in from China. You know, that just leaves the very clear impression that we're just in a temporary uh, period of abeyance uh, before uh, they attach the bullets to the top of these ballistic missiles, okay? And that's really a cynical approach which they're taking, the Chinese are taking, and I just think that we had a, an opportunity, but I think we have to focus upon this next year. I think we need those hearings so that we come back to this China question once again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.